They announced on SmackDown Friday night that there will be a tournament to crown new women's tag team champions, and it will kick off Raw tomorrow night. Or it will kick off on Raw, not that it'll kick off the show. We don't have any brackets. We don't even know any of the teams that are going to be in this thing. But Triple H moving very fast to crown new champions since the titles have been dormant since May 16th. The night Sasha Banks and Naomi left them on Johnny Ace's desk and they walked out of Raw. They announced at the time that in the future there would be a tournament to crown new champions and then nothing was said for two months. Triple H comes in and in two weeks we have an announcement about a tournament for the women's tag team titles. The women's tag team division was a joke. I can't even call it a joke now. I'm using it past tense because there would have to be a division for it to be funny. And right now there is none. So the women's tag team division was a joke right up until the day that Sasha and Naomi walked out. Triple H is going to try to change that. And the first thing that he may do is bring back Sasha Banks and Naomi. Now that Vince McMahon is out of the picture, we are closer to that becoming a reality if it hasn't already happened. There's there's rumors going around about these two that maybe they're already signed. It's already a done deal or they have an agreement in principle but nothing is signed. You know what the moral of the story is when you hear all these reports and these rumors and you read shit on social media about Sasha and Naomi? The correct answer is that nobody knows what the fuck their status is. There has not been one firm report about exactly what their current status is. So do not believe it until there is confirmation from a source that this is what has happened. Nobody knows what is going on with Sasha Banks and Naomi, other than it looks like they may be headed back to WWE, or they may not be. Nobody knows for sure. They were both at C2E2 yesterday for a signing. They were signing autographs. They were taking photos from 15 feet away with people who paid 150 bucks or whatever it was for a photo. Sasha Banks knows Triple H very well. She got her first big break working under him in NXT. You know that he doesn't want to see her go work somewhere else. He is going to try to repair whatever the rift that there still might be between the two sides and get them back. Not to punish them, not to embarrass them, but because he realizes that bringing them back is going to make a big splash. Which is exactly what they are looking to do when they reintroduce those women's tag team titles. They could work a whole angle around them walking out and now wanting to come back to take back the belts they never lost. And yes, they they can make an angle out of what happened because they already acknowledged it on television. It's not just backstage gossip that 2% of the audience is going to know what they're talking about. That ceased to be backstage gossip the minute they had Michael Cole go out on TV and call them unprofessional and say that they walked out. They put their business out there on TV. So it's fair game to turn it into an angle. They were unprofessional. They let down their fans and their colleagues and people all over the world. So in storyline, you know, they have as much of a claim to those titles as anyone. Whether they're in the tournament or not, they could show up. They could beat the hell out of everybody who's in the tournament if they're not in it themselves. They could interfere in every single fucking match. Get tossed out of the building, find their way right back in again the next week. They could buy a ticket to the show. They could take a seat in the front row. Have the winning team instead challenge them for the titles at Clash at the Castle. Or they could just have them return on TV as a surprise entrant in the tournament and they could keep it simple. But either way, they should be in the finals. They've got Dakota Kai and Io Sky as part of Bailey's new crew. They could be one team. The rest of the bracket is going to be made up of makeshift teams anyway. Probably Asuka and Alexa Bliss. Nikki Ash and Dewdrop. They could call up Toxic Attraction and put them in there. Start to see some more synergy between... NXT and the main brands, they they don't have a lot of good options. And maybe it's a small bracket. Maybe there's four fucking teams in the whole thing. We don't know yet. But they don't have a lot of great options. Sasha and Naomi against Dakota and Io at Clash at the Castle sounds good to me. Sasha and Naomi on their own would sound even better because I still don't think the women's tag team titles are even necessary. They haven't demonstrated any great interest in making them interesting. But that was the old regime. Maybe Triple H will be different. I'm still skeptical. Shayna Baszler was another star from the black and gold era under Triple H. A combined 549 days she spent as the NXT Women's Champion. The most of anyone in NXT history. 
What a great moment it was when Rhea Ripley beat her for that title. We had Mauro Ronaldo on the call for it. Rhea's in the ring. The ring is filled with fans and talent from backstage. They've got her up on their shoulders. What a great moment it was because Shayna was so dominant that when she finally got uh, beaten by the up-and-comer, the story worked. It was this great moment. But that's what Shayna was in NXT. She was she was the final boss, right? Every, every definition of what that means, that's what she was in that women's division. We never got to see that Shayna Baszler on the main roster. Even when Becky Lynch told Vince McMahon she wanted to lose her Raw Women's Championship to her at WrestleMania 36, she was rejected. And then she ended up vacating the belt anyway a month later. It would have done a lot for Shayna to be the one to beat Becky for that belt because Becky at that time, before she went away to have her kid, was legitimately one of the top two or three biggest stars and biggest baby faces in the entire company. She was looking to give Shayna the rub. Vince McMahon did not see it the same way. He never saw her that way. I don't know if her age had something to do with it or, or what it was, but Triple H takes the book and suddenly Shayna Baszler wins a gauntlet match on Friday night to earn the right to challenge Liv Morgan at Clash at the Castle. I'm expecting Liv Morgan to keep finding cheap ways to win her matches until Ronda Rousey comes back from her storyline suspension. They were in South Carolina on Friday night, and the crowd booed Liv Morgan. Not everybody in the crowd, but enough of the crowd that it was very noticeable on TV. They booed Liv Morgan. They chanted, you tapped out at her because she did at SummerSlam. Plain as day, she tapped out. I wasn't sure if the crowd was turning against her or if they wanted it that way and they piped in those chants because I can't trust anything when it comes to crowd reactions on WWE television, especially on SmackDown. Uh, But I couldn't tell right away if it was legit or not. You know, they're slowly turning Liv Morgan heel. I did hear later on from somebody who was in the building who said that they really were chanting those things at her. Becky Lynch predicted it last year on Raw when she said all the fans wanted Liv to win the title, and yet if she did, they would turn their backs on her. She was right. Now that was only one city. Maybe North Carolina this Friday will be kinder to her than South Carolina was. But the fans do this sometimes. They're fickle. Daniel Bryan used to tell us, fickle. Those fickle fans. But Liv has not exactly been booked as a strong babyface. She took advantage of an injured Ronda Rousey at Money in the Bank. And she did tap out to her at SummerSlam, but the referee didn't see it. So can you really be surprised, based on the booking, that the fans might react that way? As champion, she's been made to look like a a geek. I thought Ronda Rousey would be the one going heel coming out of SummerSlam, but it doesn't look that way. When Liv heard those chants on Friday, she looked a little rattled, and she said she appreciates the fans calling her out on her shit, which they bleeped out. Kayla Braxton was in the ring interviewing her. She had this kind of annoyed or or disgusted look on her face that she said later on was because she couldn't believe the disrespect that the fans were showing to Liv. Look, it happens to the men. It happens to the women. If it continues in other cities... Vince McMahon was notoriously stubborn when it came to his booking and what he wanted. And if it looked like, hey, maybe we should pivot and go this way because the fans have been reacting a certain way, more often than not, nope, this is the story, this is what we're doing, this is what the old man wants. Sometimes you need to roll with the punches. Embrace it. Liv gets by by the skin of her knuckles and she laughs about it. She could get great heel heat for it. This woman keeps finding ways to win. When she has no right to be the SmackDown Women's Champion, she still finds ways to win. Or maybe she goes to SmackDown this Friday and she gets wildly cheered. And this is all much ado about nothing. You you cannot act surprised when the fans do this because they've done it before. A lot of times it comes down to the booking. Sometimes the fans are just dicks. But sometimes it comes down to the booking. And if the booking makes you look weak... I mean, they're like sharks tasting blood in the water. They're going to pounce on you. If this keeps up, I say embrace it.